This case has never been about politics or personal vendetta or about name calling. The rule of law applies to all of us equally, fairly, and justly. And former presidents are no exception. I've never seen such support on a decision before. Uh, truckers, everybody, they're saying, we're not going to deal in New York. People are leaving New York. I've never seen support like this. Oh, my, my heaven's sake. How could they have thought that? we got to have his leadership who's going to stand for the rule of law, that's going to stand for Lady Justice. Lady Justice is supposed to be blind, not political. Lady Justice is supposed to be even-handed, not deciding that a Green New Deal is, is, far, is way more important than, than a basic rule of law that everybody can see and follow. You got this stupid judge in New York with the $400 million fine. What kind of, what kind of craziness is this? By the way, to you business owners in New York, come to Florida. If you're a real, a real estate guy in New York, you might want to just come on down to the Sunshine State. We would love to have you. I had to do that quick plug for my state. You know, I, gotta, I love my state now. Make America Florida! Yeah! I said make America Florida. Oh, we're going to do that. I want to make one, one clear point, because we talk a lot now about a two-tier justice system. We have to acknowledge that in America's history, there has been a two-tier justice system. There is a reason why a lot of black Americans do not trust the justice system. Because there was a time where the justice system was abused against black people in this country. It was wrong then. It is still wrong today. What this is telling you is if you are an enemy of the political establishment, they will use the judicial system to come after you. This was a political prosecution. The judgment was a joke. The legal theory behind it was absurd. And it is going to chase businesses out of New York more than even people who are here trying to get out, which will be difficult. It means that if you are starting a business, there's no way you want to start it in New York because you see that the judicial system has become a mockery and you don't want to go anywhere near it. Actually, it's closer to half a billion with a 9% interest, assuming True. it'll take 18 to two years to actually settle this in an appeal, which I think it should be appealed. Um, he'll work hard to raise it. I think he can do it. But I, what I, I don't think this case is about Trump anymore at all, because you heard the governor of New York come out yesterday and say, look, everybody, uh, don't be scared about doing a business in New York, uh, because the only people we prosecute are people like Donald Trump who don't behave well. That didn't go over very well with the investment community because we're all asking each other, who's next? This was a victimless crime. Nobody lost any money. And a judge out of nowhere put on a $355 million penalty. I mean, who's next? Well, my point is there's never been a case like this in 75 years. Everything you just listed off is done by every real estate developer everywhere on earth in every city. This has never, ever been prosecuted. But here's the real point that people in New York should concern themselves with. You can put your money anywhere. I'm a real estate developer. Do you think there's a chance I would ever take a chance on New York again? New York is turning itself into a flyover state. I have to build data centers now. I'm not going to go to New York. New York has power. It's got fiber optics. It's got Niagara Falls. But no, we're not even thinking about it. We're going to places that have the exact same thing where we have rational governors that have never done this to investors. This is about New York and its people. If I were in New York today and I was living there, I would ask myself, maybe we should hire better management. Why is this happening to us? Why are we becoming a flyover state? And in this case, even the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. We'd like to. But the judge said, no, 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 no. I, I think the challenge with uh, the aftermath of decision is twofold. One is, uh, will it stand? Because it's probably not good for the environment uh, in New York to attract capital.
for real estate development. Uh, it seems a, a little excessive, and obviously when challenged in the appellate court, many assume that it will be adjusted downward and maybe not eliminated but be more appropriate for the fact that this was a victimless crime in the context of monies lost there wasn't any and so also this law was used for the first time in 75 years uh, to get this outcome and so I think that would be examined as well by the appellate court in New York uh, I, I, I find it you know, really, what I care about, you know, my, my kids live in New York. I mean, I want New York to be a successful state. I want people to uh, go there and create companies and invest in it. But every day that passes, the environment gets more toxic in terms of traffic of capital. And remember, investors don't have to go to New York. They have other choices. And that's clearly what's... Sure happening is people are saying why go there when there's this kind of risk and everybody's asking this question who's next because that's the, the, the challenge to, 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 make, to quell down the concerns people have, not just domestically. This is a global story. This is about the competitiveness of, of New York State versus other states. And, and right now, it's, it's, it's not looking good for New York. Yeah, Kevin, you've been really clear on this, uh, but and, and this case is emblematic, but companies have been fleeing New York. The regulations, the regulatory environment is one thing, but if you grab an if you add an arbitrary regulatory and justice environment on top of it, then yes, they could try to pretend like Donald Trump is an outlier. But who is next? Kind of answer that question you posited. Is it friends with Trump? Is it like Trump? Is it once treated about Trump? Uh, where does it stop? Well, I look at it as an investor. Remember, my job is to deploy capital every single day. I happen to be a developer of sure. very high-end data centers for AI. So New York is a great destination for power because they got Niagara Falls. So sub four cents a kilowatt hour is what you need. You also need land to be able to buy that. You need to be in partnership with the government, and you need permits. But so does North Dakota have those attributes, or Oklahoma, or West Virginia, or, or Ma Montana, or, or Tennessee. They're all the same. They're all competing. These centers cost $4.2 billion. Now, where am I going to go? This has nothing to do with politics. Why would I take the risk, the regulatory risk, in New York, in addition to the fact, as you pointed out, it's got the highest taxes in the country, the most punitive regulatory environments, very hard to get permits, and clearly people are questioning whether you can work with government there. The governor herself made a plea asking investors, don't worry about yes. this. <laughs> it's just this kind of investor that we charge half a billion dollars for. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. We're all listening to that <laughs> saying, no, no. No, 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 no. You, you have to figure this out for yourself as a state because the money is quietly going to the other states. That's where my four point two yes, billion Kevin, is going. You're right. you say it's going somewhere else. No, no. Let's penalize this developer for three hundred fifty five million. And if we're going to do that. Let's penalize all the developers all across America. They've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. All well, around the world, people are talking about what happened here. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? The judicial system is now being criticized. People are asking themselves, the bar of New York. Is this judge rational to charge $355 million in a case where no one lost any money? Is that good for the people of New York? Should the people of New York wake up to this and say, what's happening to us? Why is this becoming so perverse? Why are we the focus of this injustice? And I, nothing to do with Trump. I'm not supporting Trump. I'm supporting American entrepreneurship. And New York is slowly becoming the number one loser state in America. I'm sorry, that's what's happening.